We can do that. Okay, I want to hear it. All right, go for it. You, oh, you want me? Oh, you oh, want me to no, do it? Where's you? I thought you were going to do this. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to do this. You're the one with the voice. What are you talking about? <laughs> Coming this summer. <laughs> That's all I nice. got. Nice. That's all I got. That's good. That's good. Hey, this is Chris, and welcome to Popcorn Finance and the fifth and final episode in our Back to School series. In this episode, we're doing something a little bit different than we've done in the past four episodes. This is just a fun conversation that I had with Gene and Parker in Philadelphia at Podcast Movement. We had just finished filming a fun little quick video for Popcorn Finance, and the topic of college came up. So I decided to sit with them and ask them about the role that college played or didn't play in their lives. So as always, thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoy my conversation with Gene and Parker. My name's Gene Irvin, and I uh, went to college to VCU. Oh, I've gone to MICA first, and then I went to VCU. Um, I was fortunate to have my parents pay for it. Oh, nice. So no student loans or anything like that, and debt-free when I got out. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty big present, honestly, and I know that. So, yeah. But however, I did go to General Assembly, which is like a boot camp. Mm. And that was about uh, 10 grand. Mm. And I did pay that out of pocket. And um, I was able to pay it back after two months of getting my job back, or like a job after that. So my name is Parker Anderson. And I actually never went to college. So I wasn't fortunate enough. Um, well, my, my parents would have paid for it, but I wasn't like that wasn't a career path that I wanted to take. I didn't want to go through the, the four years of college to get a, a nine to five job. That was never something I was intended to do. Like I, it just wasn't where like my heart was at. So, um, I was, I've been taking photos for since middle school, pretty much, uh, uploading YouTube videos and all that stuff. And I just carried that out through high school and I've just been doing it ever since. So I spent like the time, the way I've always looked at it is like, if you, the the most valuable learning you can do is by actually doing it. So like not in a classroom, not by like no disrespect to anyone that went to college. Like I'm sure it's a like super valuable tool that you can get. But I always just I'm more of a learning by doing it type of person. That's just how I've just gotten to where I am. During our conversation, I brought up how crazy I thought it was that at the age of 18, you're expected to choose what you want to do for the rest of your life. I mean, that's a really big decision and, and a difficult one at that. Or at least I know it was, it was a difficult decision for me. And that's when Gene brought up the idea of taking a gap year. A gap year is basically when you take off a year from school, say between high school and college, to give yourself time to think about what it is you want out of life, what it is you want to do, get to know yourself a little bit better, and not feel rushed to make that big decision. I definitely want um, like any future children to, for me, I want them to go gap year, do tons of internships or like, you know, work for other people and see what is, uh, what are their options, find their passions. And then if they really, truly want to commit to, you know, for your college, then go for it. But, you know, it's not a necessary thing now. Um, and I think part of that gap year too is like, when, you, when you're growing up, every single year of your life that you can remember, you've been in school. Yeah. Like, you've been forced to be in school. So you don't actually know what a year without working, you don't know what a year without school is. So you learn, like, I learned so much in that, like, I can't say I took a gap year because I never went back. <laughs> but <laughs> in, the, in that four, like, four or five gap years, um, like, you learn so much about just how to, like, sustain yourself on, like, just life in general like what to do with all your time and how much time you actually do have because normally you only have three months or two and a half months of summer and then you just ride back to school so you can learn a lot just in like that whole year period and the possibilities you can figure out and the things you can discuss like the things you can discover are just ridiculous that I don't know I think that everyone should at least try it. So now that we know a little bit more about Gene and Parker let's talk about how they got to where they are career-wise. For Jean, she found herself having to make a quick and unexpected career change. I got a job at a, a startup, great gig, and um, they just realized that I wasn't really passionate. And what they did for me was pretty amazing. It was kind of scary at first because they fired me. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? And they're like, Jean, it's really not the end of the world. You know, I, th I think everybody should be get fired at least once. And everybody should lose a job. And everybody should... Um, 
especially from a job you're not passionate about, yeah. Jane. <laughs> so he said, don't feel bad. Like, seriously, like, we want to let you go so that you can find what you're truly passionate about faster. And I was like, okay, you're just trying to be nice to me because you let me go. <laughs> but I think there is a, a huge wisdom in it, you know? And so I really did try to take it to heart, even though it was really hard in the moment to do that because that's your, that's your livelihood, right? Yeah. And so um, I, I took a leap. I, I saved some money for a move to Kansas um, because my husband now is was there. And I was like, you know, we, not, we need to figure out if this is going to work. <laughs> And uh, within two months, I started networking because I was bored, cold emailing. And uh, I found my other co-founder, Jay Austin, mm. and uh, he was doing a, a pitch or he was doing a pitch event. He was the MC for it. And I was like, this kid is brilliant. And mm -hmm. he's pretty much like he's only in his 20s. And I was like, I want to pick his brains. Mm. And so we got together and uh, I said, look, you have your ears uh, down on the ground in the tech world and that's where I want to be. Uh, let me know if you have a job opportunity. And mm. so he said, a couple days later, I think I might have one. And I was like, okay. So he pitched to me this business idea of creating this um, like media production company. Mm. And uh, it was like inspired a little bit from Gary V. Mm. Um, mm. You know, he he sent me a link and said, what do you think of this business opportunity? And I looked at it and that same night I said, well, it's a very new space and not many people have capitalized on it. Mm. I think there's a huge opportunity and I've always wanted to be in the media space. So I was like, let's do it. So literally after like a month of knowing him, we started a company called 8080 Roll. Started at the beginning of June and uh, it's been running for a year since. So it's, uh, it's and, and we're currently rebranding, so it's going to be called Creators Group. So uh, big things to come. Well, I've always had like a, I don't know if it's an ADHD or what it is, but I've always like, when I had the idea to do something, like I always went 110% into it, like almost to a point to where it was unhealthy. I think I started in 2009 making videos. Um, and it was just of like hobbies I would pick up. So... Are you familiar with cup stacking? Have you ever seen like oh, yeah. kids stack cups? So when I was, oh, how old was I? I had to be like 12 at least. Like I would spend at least 12, 13 hours a day just in my basement stacking cups, like recording myself just to upload them onto YouTube. And I, I did that every day probably for a solid year, like 13 hours a day, like w from when I got home from school to about like one o'clock at night. And my parents were really cool that I could stay up that late stacking cups because that was not the most attractive <laughs> noise in the world. Like, I, I don't know if you've ever heard what those sound like, but it, but it's ridiculous. They're pretty chill. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they so are. They're, re they're really cool. And I did that to a point to where I eventually went to the world championships for it. And then. Well, really? Yeah, I got, thir I got third place for it. Did you know this? I did not. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's you're a you're a big deal. I it, know about it. It was a while. It was a while ago. Um, but yeah, so I got through place, and then it just kind of faded away. Just when I got into school, like I just moved on to a different thing. Uh, so I kept making videos. So I got into another hobby. I uh, spent 13 hours a day doing magic. Uh, then it was the Rubik's cube, and then. I, I found a consistent theme of I just like making videos like that was my thing I just enjoyed making videos and it was after I got out of high school um, backtracking a little bit I wasn't a straight A student by any means like I was like I barely passed high school and one of the things that made me pass high school was my film teacher mm -hmm. uh, there was an advanced program that uh, he was like hey I'll put you in this program because I can see you really enjoy doing it you were really passionate about it um, if you keep your grades up Mm. So that is like the sole reason I passed high school and like, like props to teachers like that. Cause those are like the, the biggest influencers in like our generation's life is like, like how I said earlier, like you with them like nine months out of a year. Yeah. So like they have such a big impact on your life and what they can do. And then once I got out of high school, I took the gap year, um, or the gap. Okay. The I, gap I, can't, I can't keep calling it a gap year. I don't know why I keep calling it a gap year. You're still on the gap year. Yeah. <laughs> it's going good. Um, gap decade. <laughs> the gap life. Gap uh, life. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start a Instagram handle. Gap, gap life. life. <laughs> oh, and then you can get sponsored by the gap. And the it's gap. Gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be perfect. Great, great side hustle right there. All right. Uh, I got it. One of my mother's friends asked me to shoot her wedding because she knew I had a camera and I had taken some photos at that point. 
and it was money. And at that point, I realized, oh, hey, people will pay for this. Mm. Because up until that point, I just did it for myself. Like, that was, a, it was just my passion that wanted to do it. And, like, I was like, oh, my God, people actually pay for this. Like, what is this? <laughs> and then I've just been rolling on that. So I've been shooting weddings. I did about 35 weddings last year. Oh, shooting. Wow. Yeah. That's it, a lot. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, so, and then I just got on with 8080 about uh, three weeks ago, about a month ago. Yeah. And they were like, hey, you want to come to Philly and shoot a conference? I was like, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> and here we are right now. Yeah. So it's been a fun experience. I've gotten to travel quite a bit. So I'm glad. And I hope it just keeps going from where it, from where it's going. Yeah. I like that because I think there's something special when you can like follow your passion because you kind of discovered it on your own. Yeah. You, you've, you did things you like. It's truly genuine to right. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think some people, their maybe their parents don't allow them to kind of do the things they like to do or they don't allow themselves to take the time to explore their passions. So they're just going to school. They're just, they know I have to go to college. I have to go to a good college. Mm-hmm. I have to get a good job. And then that's going to be my life. Even though they don't think about, am I even going to like that? Yeah, exactly. then it's just, I just know I need to do these things and you deal with that later, right? You deal with the reality yeah. of what you're in yeah. when you get there. Yeah. Exactly. And I've, I've been super blessed with my parents, like being as supportive as they are. Like I like the ideas I've thrown at them and like the support <laughs> they've given me. I don't know how they like, how they calculate that, but I'm like just Parker grateful. can do no wrong. <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> they knew you, they knew you'd figure it out. Still figuring it out. Yeah, Gap right? life. Gap yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> You know, getting the opportunity to talk to people like Gene and Parker is one of the things I love the most about doing this show. I mean, if it wasn't for this podcast, I wouldn't have the chance to talk to a world class cup stacker. So, <laughs> no, I mean, but among other things, you know, Parker is also an amazing photographer. Gene is doing an excellent job with Creators Group, and you know, it's, it's just really cool talking to these people who are doing really fascinating things with their lives and doing things that are that are unconventional. This is not your typical nine to five career, and they're doing something that they that they find fulfillment and passion. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to them and, and and have them on the show. And you know, I enjoyed this conversation so much that I'm going to be airing part two on Wednesday. And in part two, Gene talks about what it's like growing up and having these expectations on you career and education wise when your parents are are immigrants to the U.S. And then Parker manages to get me to talk a little bit about myself and, you know, what it was like for me changing my major and, you know, what it was like talking to my parents about those things and the decisions that I was making in my life. So make sure you come back on Wednesday to catch part two of our conversation. And before we go, I have a big announcement for you. If you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you probably already know this, but if you don't, (laughs) Popcorn Finance was named as the best new personal finance podcast at the Plutus Awards at FinCon this year. It was, it was amazing. I, I, I'm still just getting used to it. It's, it, you know, I was almost speechless when it, when it happened, you know, I, I was just happy being nominated to be a finalist on this list, but got there Saturday night, sitting in the, in the audience. I was even sitting back. I didn't, I wasn't even sitting with the other finalists because like, I, I didn't, I didn't know where I should be. I was like, I, I think I'll just sit right here. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to win this anyway. So let me just kind of hang back over here. But they ended up calling my name, got, got a, a huge cheer from the people there. The support was amazing. And, you know, really th- it wouldn't be possible without, without all of you listening. And, you know, if you didn't help me get nominated as a finalist, none of this would even be possible. So thank you so much. I, re- I really appreciate that for, you know, for you being here, being a part of the show. It makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, this just motivates me to do more and to make the show better and to keep growing and, and putting out more things uh, that hopefully you all enjoy. I'll be putting out an episode in the near future, kind of recapping the whole FinCon experience. And, and if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see some of those pictures as well. I got some pictures uh, with Chris Hogan at the live show with Second Benjamins at the awards. Well, I was, I was walking around just taking pictures with everyone I could with that <laughs> with the awards. So as always, I appreciate your support and you listening and you joining me here for another bag of popcorn. Hope you have an amazing next couple of days because I'll be back and I'll see you on Wednesday. Your boy, keep it popping like Mary Poppins.